Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is called Lycanthropy and it's an ARP. Here we go. Okay, so I think you get the idea. So mainly this is basically going to be an ARP, but I also programmed in a sequence just because. So you have to go to the sequencer tab and turn on the sequence and here we go. So you can totally use that sequence if you want to. I thought, why not make it in there? So uh, yeah, so let's dive into this patch here. So let's turn off the effects and let's turn off the sequencer arpeggio so we can just listen to the sound which is just going to be that. So for this patch, we're not going to be using the utility engine. We're just going to be using engine two and engine one with one filter over here. So let's turn off number two and let's focus just on the first one over here. So this is going to be a wave table here and we're going to be using this kind of weird shape. So this wave shape or wave table actually is going to be this M2 Duo PW and it's found in the synthesizers category about, uh, I don't know, maybe kind of the one, two, three, four, fifth one down in this category here. So we're going to get this kind of sound here. Now we're doing a couple things to it here. We're adding some voices. So we're adding four voices of unison. The detuning is going to be 3% and stereo all the way to 100%. And then we're also going to be using a little bit of wave folding. So the wave folding is going to be 2.93. And that's pretty much how this wave table is going to work, how, how this is really going to look. And we're not going to be using any of the position. I kind of just wanted to use this wave table to get this shape here because there's quite a lot of different shapes in here, but I like this first one here and then kind of just changing this little setting here. And obviously sent to filter number one. So going over to engine number two, we're going to be using an analog here. And it sounds kind of like that. So this looks kind of weird because we have a little bit of FM going tied to this third macro. So let's turn this off for now. So it's going to kind of look like this. So for the first oscillator, it's going to be a square wave. We're moving this down by one octave or 12 semitones. The second oscillator is going to be the ramp up saw wave volume at negative 2.43. And then the third oscillator is also going to be an upward saw and it's going to be pitched up one octave at 12 semitones and the volume is going to be all the way at zero dB. And then both of those together is going to sound like this. Now, before we get into the filter here, the envelope here for the VCA, we're going to be doing a one millisecond attack, decay 127 milliseconds, zero sustain, and the release is 20 milliseconds. And we are changing the decay curve to 2.08, and then the attack curve is going to be at zero. So going over to the first filter, we're going to be using the MS-20. Now we have the cutoff and the resonance mapped to these macros down over here. And we'll go over the macros at the end of the video just to kind of look over what's going on under the hood here. But just so you know, the first one is going to be the cutoff. So don't necessarily reach up here to change the cutoff. Always go for this macro because it's much more controlled and it has a certain limited range for the best sound. And then also same thing for the resonance. I went a little bit crazy. I turned it all the way to, uh, what is it here, about 75%. So there's pretty close to self-oscillation in that sense. But I think default, the patch is going to come maybe somewhere around here. So on this cutoff here, we have an envelope number two. So this envelope number two, the attack is going to be one millisecond, the decay 150 milliseconds, zero sustain, release 100 milliseconds, decay curve, negative four, and the attack curve, zero. Now we're just putting it on this cutoff to kind of get that movement every time we hit a key. So that's going to be triggered from the poly keyboard. And the exact amount is 0.38. So pretty uh, simplistic there. Now we turn on the effects over here. So let's take a look at what's going on under the hood here. So we're going to be using all of these effects here. So let's turn up number or effects B and look at number A. So let's turn off the distortion and then the reverb. So the first thing that this is going to hit is a delay. 
Now this is just gonna, they're gonna be the regular delay and the time is gonna be one over eight. The fine is gonna be a little bit changed to 0 0.105. The feedback is gonna be 0.233. Stereo spread 0 0.040. High pass 20, low pass 4,892 Hertz. Now the dry wet, as you can see down here, is going to be modulated from the macros here or change from the macros on this fourth effects knob. But right now the macro is gonna be at 27%. Next up, it goes into a reverb. So the pre-delay is gonna be 20 milliseconds, size one, decay 0.331, stereo width 0 0.500, high pass 200, low pass 15K, and then damping 0 0.600. And for the amount for the dry wet at full, it's gonna be 17%. Then we go into a distortion. Now this is kind of a more so minimal effect here, just kind of getting a little bit extra saturation here because it's really not that much in the mix. It's going to be 16%, so relatively low for the dry wet. So it's going to be on the germanium preset here, and then the drive is going to be 20.7 dB, and that's really the only change that we're going to be using for this uh, distortion here. Next up, it's going to go to FX Bank B, which it's going to next hit a multiband. So it's going to sound like this without it, and then now this with a multiband. Now this is really to get that really crisp highs and then kind of dial in that mid range and kind of kind of bring down the low low end a little bit just so it's not too overwhelming. So yeah, really not too much here. This is like I always say, this is a lot to taste to kind of really like I guess chip in your sound if that makes any sense. Next up, we have these stereo panning here. So this one's going to be a rate of one over eight, and then the amount's going to be 0.312. Now this is much more heard once the arpeggio is going or the sequence is going. It's kind of just moving some stuff around the stereo field in a rhythmic fashion. It's subtle, but it's nice. And then last but not least, we go into a shimmer reverb. So the pitch shifting is going to be 12 semitones or one octave, feedback 0 0.500, size 50%, modulation all the way to four. High pass, 200, low pass, 7K, ducking 0 0.280, and the stereo width 0 0.750, and then the amount for the macro is going to be 0 0.19. So now we have the sound built. Now we need to dial in the ARP over here. So we turn on the sequencer over here, and on this arpeggiator, we're really just gonna be going up for the mode, and I do have some region going on here for every half bar. And the reason for that is if you look down here on the gate length and kind of put our mouse over here, this is gonna be at 12%, and then the slide is gonna be 16.4. So every half bar, it's gonna regenerate a different random value at this percentage for these values like gate length and slide and so on. So the ARP's not so boring, it's not so repetitive, and we kind of get something new every single time. And then really the only change here is on step number 11. I brought this up one octave, but just one small little change just to kind of freshen the, the whole sound up, especially if you're doing some more so monophonic kind of things or just hitting one note for a while. It, it makes it a little bit more interesting if you don't want to do a lot of notes at one time. So you can hit this note or this beat the whole time and it sounds somewhat entertaining. And then the changes for the randomness for the gate length and the slide kind of also help make it a little bit more new every single time you listen to it. And if you're holding down one note, then it frees you up a little bit to kind of mess around with these macros like the cutoff, the resonance, FM, so on and so forth. So now that we have basically all of this covered here, what we do need to talk about uh, the sequencer, that's not really too different, I guess, harmonic minor, which is a nice scale I personally like. And we're just going CCG, CCC, F, CCC, C, G sharp, G, CCC. Not too crazy right over there. All these settings down here for the ARP are going to be the same for that. So you're probably going to be more so in the arpeggiator section, but if you want to use the sequence, go for it. Why not? So now for the macros here. So if we go over to the synth page here, the first one's going to be the cutoff. And as you can see, this little blue dot here kind of moves around as we're moving that over here. So this knob here is just dedicated for the cutoff. This one's dedicated just for the resonance. So depending on the sound of resonance that you would like, that's the knob you want to reach for. And this FM over here, so this one's kind of more so as a tonal thing, so take a listen to what this sounds like.
So it's a nice way to build up some tension and then release with this FM knob here. And re really what, all what we're doing, we're dragging this M3 over here and we're dragging all over here to this FM over here. So the interesting spot is we also hear this oscillator number three obviously is at the full volume, but we're also using this oscillator as a modulator for number one and number two. Thought that was kind of interesting. So yeah, that is the FM knob there. And then last but not least, we have the effects. So if you go over to our effects section and we basically have this tied to the delay, this reverb here, also this distortion, which is, I guess, yes, it's technically an effect. I thought I'd keep it there in mind as well. And then we go over to FXB and then we have the shimmer right over here. So delay, reverb, distortion, and the shimmer down here are all gonna be on this one FX knob here. As we can see, if we click this button, macro number four, we can see the FX A1, which is delay, A2, which is the reverb, A3, which is the distortion, and then FX B3, which is the shimmer down over here. So yeah, that's basically this patch in a nutshell. If you'd like to get it for free, there's a link in the video description below, and it can be yours with the download link click or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, this is Lycanthropy. Hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.